and welcome. Today we're going to talk about product definition, why it's needed, what is it. Uh, my name is Ravi Varma. I'm a professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org and the founder of Smooth Apps. And today I'm excited to have a panel of expert panelists, uh, prof fellow professional Scrum.org, and I'd like to invite you guys to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Chad Beyer, professional Scrum trainer, uh, coach, consultant based out of Wisconsin. Charles Bradley, I'm the uh, Agile Coach in Chief of AgileSoftwareTraining.com and ScrumCrazy.com. I'm uh, Victor, I'm uh, one of the founders of Concrete Solutions in Brazil. We're based in Rio, Sao Paulo, and I'm also a trainer uh, at Scrum.org. Today I was just curious to pick your brains on uh, what exactly is product definition? A lot of times our clients, our students ask us this question. Um, what do you think it is? Why is it needed? Why should anybody even care? So Charles, I don't know if you can take that one. Yeah, I can yeah. take that one. Um, a lot of times, the students come to our courses, and we talk a lot about the product backlog and a single product owner and all that kind of stuff. But they have trouble conceptualizing what the product should be in their organization. Now, sometimes they have kind of a simple case, and it's really easy to deal with. But other times, it's a very complex thing. And so, the reason that people should care about how they define their product is it impacts the boundaries of their scaling approach, it might impact uh, how value is optimized throughout the organization, it can also impact the dependencies and efficiency of the organization to be able to put out software that has value. Um, so it's not something that it's you know really heavily covered in the Scrum Guide, but it is something that comes up a lot in our classes, like how do you define the product? And so um, that's how I sort of see it, I don't know if you guys if, add, I want to add yeah. something. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's absolutely what I, I would agree. The, the assumption is that there's this product out there, but there's not a lot of guidance uh, in the industry on how to define it. Um, and I think that there's, that's, a, that's a dangerous zone because a lot of times what will happen is backlogs, product backlogs will get formed um, potentially in too many areas. And then all that does is, is create dependencies and coordination to manage across teams um, and not just across teams, but across backlogs. And that's, I think, the struggle that a lot of organizations, when they come to um, scaling topics around Scrum, uh, that they fall into. Uh, another thing uh, I think is relevant in this is that once you start to get confused on what the definition of the product is, it's a lot harder for people to understand what their role is supposed to be and, and how they can actually contribute to, to whatever you're trying to accomplish. So if if the boundaries are, I mean, they're not uh, they're not going to be perfect. But if if they're all fuzzy, then you're you're probably uh, getting paid by a different uh, product to work on that other product. And there's you know you don't really care about what happens over there. And and there you don't identify those guys there as your team. And so things get also on the personal level really mixed up. So it's like problems with lines of accountability, lines of transparency, um, and you know what, what you're being motivated by. Because if you're sort of exactly. budgeted by this other group, but then you're working on this other product, you're like not sure where your you know loyalties and energy should lie. So that creates a lot of confusion. So having clear boundaries around the product itself, and then everybody rallying around the product backlog and the product owner is definitely helpful. Yeah, and unraveling those dependencies um, across the technology concerns. So a, a common issue I've seen, back to the role confusion, uh, when we form too many backlogs because we think we have products and systems that exist, mm -hmm. then the product owners, as a side effect, get assigned to those backlogs. And then the teams start surfacing all these technology dependencies. And product owners are kind of like, well, this doesn't seem like something that I really need to be involved with, right? But, but yet we're pushing product owners to make priority decisions across all these backlogs. So mm -hmm. a lot of times I see the answer is uh, collapsing backlogs to a, to a certain point. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we're discussing today. Like, what is that point, right? What is your product in your organization? 